Another thing that uh, the Global BioFest is all about, of course, is featuring some really amazing people from across the globe working to protect those species and habitats. And so I'm so excited to welcome in our next speaker. So we've already had the privilege of heading out to the Toucan Rescue Ranch over the course of the BioFest. They are an amazing organization in Costa Rica that works to rescue, rehabilitate, and re-release injured wildlife. They are one of our longest standing and most amazing partners at Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants, the organization behind this festival. And so I'm privileged to bring in Ana Maria Viada Rosales, who is the chief uh, veterinarian at, at the Toucan, uh, veterinary supervisor at the Toucan Rescue Ranch, and she is going to speak to us today on the importance of a one health approach to conservation, a really, really big, important topic, and one we've covered throughout the fest. So, Anna Maria, thank you so much for joining us today. Hello, it's so I'm so glad to be here. We're so glad to have you. Thanks so much for coming in. I'm so excited to learn from you today. Yeah, I'm excited to, uh, to show everything. I'm currently in the clinic right now. I have the interns working up over here. We have several animals, um, but yeah, I can start right away. Fantastic. Well, and if we see cool animals in the background, just flag me and I'll bring your camera back to you. But if you want to bring up your presentation, go right ahead. Okay, I'll start with the presentation and then I will show what we, what animals we have on the back. Fantastic. Um, there it is. There we go. Excellent. All right, let's just bring up that PowerPoint and we should be all set to go. All right. Um, well, I'm Ana Maria Villada Rosales. I'm a wildlife veterinarian. I've been working in Tucan Rescue Ranch for four years. I have a master in conservation medicine and I'm going to be talking today about One Health. I guess, well, we all have been seeing One Health throughout all the uh, presentations we have had today, but it's basically a very important concept. It's, um, the collaborative efforts of multiple disciplines working together locally, nationally, globally to attain optimal health for people, animals, and our environment. Basically saying that everything is interconnected. If we have a healthy environment, we're going to have healthy animals and healthy people by uh, uh, just by having it all together. But So it's really, really important to have one, comp one healthy with the other because if you have one that is unhealthy, it's going to affect and impact completely the others. Um, so why is One Health so important? Well, it is because 60% of the infectious diseases that we're finding in humans are zoonotic. Uh, many of them come from, um, from animals, and 5% of the new diseases that, we're, uh, that are appearing every year are from animal origin. And many of these diseases can be used for, um, for bioterrorism. So, and one of the biggest examples we have right now is COVID. It appeared in a, in, a, in a place where we do have bush, uh, bush meat and it, it exploded too globally and it has been affecting us since then. So it's really, really important to have one health because it's the way that we're gonna be monitoring and um, protecting ourselves from, from all of these diseases. Now I'm gonna talk about um, Tucan Rescue Ranch. Um, Tucan Rescue Ranch is the place I worked at. Um, our mission is to rescue, rehabilitate and release Costa Rican wildlife. Uh, we are. We have been working uh, in conservation for all from, since 2004. And even though we're we're a small grassroots organization, how does one um, Tucan Rescue Ranch approaches the One Health philosophy? Well, let's start from people. Um, we do education. We have so many education programs. Uh, we have international virtual classroom. We have animal handling workshops. We have a first day. Workshop. We have educational uh, public property walks where we talk about the animals and our ambassadors, the animals that we cannot release and have stayed here after human animal conflict problems. We work with universities, we bring them here, we do internships, we do volunteering, we do local school lessons, which is the most important one. We involve the local people and we involve the, the, the young kids to teach them respect, knowledge, uh, how to treat the animals, how to create a healthy relationship with the environment. So that is really, really, really important. And we also do on on-site field trip visits. Like we take some of our people over here, some people are, um, in charge of the education program, and they go to schools. They talk about our program. They talk about what we are doing. They talk about um, how we are working to sa to save and relocate all of these animals. We we even work with the government uh, doing animal handling workshops and and teach teaching them how to handle the animals, how to, when to bring them to us and how to bring them to us. And also one of the most important thing is we, we promote tourism to our local community. While opening our doors to, to local and international tourists, 
we bring them to Costa Rica, we teach them about the animals and they go to their local places and they just boost the economy uh, through tourism. We also have been hosting charity. We have over there tons for Tucans. Um, this is a very important community outreach work we have been doing is sadly because of COVID, we haven't been able to do it, but we do communicate our outreach. We, it's a charity event. We raise money for ourselves and for other uh, projects that we work with. We have been networking through Avla with other rescue centers. Try, uh, we, we exchange some animals. So for example, we receive a monkey, a howler monkey that has um, success, well, a good success rate and it could be pre wild into the wild. Then, we send it to another rescue center. So it's really, really important working to other places to have all the animals and well, so the animals can have an opportunity to go back into the wild. We also have been working with the Slot Institute, creating the, the Saving Slots Together program is the baseline of our um, release program for slots. It's the whole training we go through. It takes two years. It, it takes one, uh, two, almost two years after we release the animals just to make sure that they're thriving into the wild. And, we, we have also been working with the Macaw Recovery Network, receiving uh, macaws from their project whenever they need to be rescued, sending some macaws over there whenever they need to be released. We have been uh, working with Minaik very closely because they bring us the animals, we train them in workshops, and we work with them when we need to release the animals back into the wild. We have also been joining international events, uh, like Global Biodiversity Festival, we um, Conservation Expo. We try to do like showcase what is going on in Costa Rica, so people, well, so we can have more tourism coming in and open it all. So that's the, the one health approach to people. Now, um, we also been working with, uh, sorry, I went too fast. Uh, we also been working with Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants, uh, how we said, we do classes online, we do community outreach also with the uh, local schools who I've been talking about, like with San in San Isidro, Santa Cecilia, Nazaret, San Jose. And as I said, we have the internship and volunteering program. We have Lupa, the Lupa Broad Islands. We have professional internships. We have one month opportunities for volunteers that want to come. And obviously the onsite I was talking about where you can come visit, learn everything about our animals, um, and everything that we're doing. And also if you want to stay over, you can go backstage and see how we are working with the re uh, rehabilitation of the animals. And when we go into the environmental part, um, Tucan Rescue Ranch has been working really closely with Cafe Breed. Uh, he's a, uh, it's a coffee that has given us the habitat and the slot blender where uh, they sell a coffee that is, has the, the Tucan X, uh, Rescue Ranch logo and then they give us tracking equipment. And we have been using this, tr this tracking equipment to follow the slots throughout the canopy, making sure they're doing good. But to start to do that, we opened a release site on, on Nazareth and this release site from being a reforest, uh, deforested area, it has been reforested into what we call the Bosque of de los Perezosos, which in English will be the forest of the, of the slots. We have also been working with ISE and the electric company, and they have been donating trees, donating volunteers, and through four-year program, we have been reforestating this part of, of, um, of Sarapiqui that connects to the Braulio Carrillo. So that's the place that we have been working um, to put our animals back and, um, to improve our program of saving and slots, and slots together by increasing the habitat, reducing fragmentation, connect, make a, a connection uh, with natural places. And not only that, we have also been working with other places near our release site uh, called Earth University and Tirimbina Biological Reserve that when our animals are ready to be completely by themselves and they don't need their tracking devices anymore, that's when we send them to these places and they're on a hard release and they're gonna be living there for for all their lives. And the good part is that they have biologists working directly on, on that area. And they have been telling us that their animals are doing great. So we have been um, reforestating and also connecting and networking with other places. I'm gonna show you guys a, a small video of how our reforestation program at the release site has been going. That's how it used to look before.
so now you have seen that how we have used the one health approach to people, the community, helping the community, boosting the economy, and then um, the environment, how we have restored the environment for release of our, of, for more releases on, on our place. Ah. The presentation was going a little bit um, wild. Um, but now we're, I'm going to talk how the One Health, well, how Tucan Rescue Ranch approaches One Health to their rehabilitation and, and what we do. We rescue, rehabilitate, and, re and release animals. When we receive an animal, it helps us to understand what is going on in that place. We rescue, by rescuing these animals, it allows us to see what the human animal conflict is, is happening in the real world. We see what is going on in these places, how the fragmentation is affecting them how the infrastructure is affecting them, they get electrocuted. So we see how the power lines are connecting them into the canopy. We, uh, we see them getting uh, run over by cars. So we see how the, the roads are going to all those wild places. We all, it also helps us to monitor disease. When we receive wild populations from a certain area and we continue to receive animals from that place, we know that there's something is affecting the animals. It could be a sickness or it could be a, a, or it could be a virus or it could be something human made like pesticides. So all of that helps us understand what is going on over there. We, it also helps us monitor the environmental problems. We see habitat loss. We see what is, how it, that the climate change is affecting these animals and how, well, it is really, really important to know all of this because biodiversity loss does affect us because it affects the food chain and the um, uh, food available, availability and the sustainability we have. So when we receive the animal, it's really, really important to know where they come from and the exact area where they come from. And we are always asking Minai where the animals are coming from. Even the people, we ask them where, where in their community it is, because that way we're going to understand the conflict that is going on in that area and what are causing the issues that are affecting these animals. And the final part is the rewilding. We, when we, the animal is ready to go back into the wild, they go back into the wild into where they came from. We don't translocate animals. They go directly to where, where they were found. But when we receive the animals, we have to make sure that when we're gonna release them, um, it is a self-sustaining population. That means that there's food and there's uh, uh, everything they need available for them to survive. Um, it, only, it only can be on these places. If we know that there's a problem going on in their environment, then these animals will come back into our care. And we don't want that. We want them to be wild and free. So that's when we have to make sure that the habitat is healthy. And if it's not healthy, then we have to make everything in our power to make the habitat healthy. That's when conservation medicine comes in. That is basically what One Health has been talking about. It's um, having a healthy ecosystem that can sustain the animals that in, in return will affect how the humans relate to that ecosystem. And if the humans have everything they need covered, then they will help um, they will help the animals and they will help the ecosystem. So everything at the end is always together. We need everything to be healthy in order to be able to release the animals and continue the work. And that's how basically a small rescue center, a grassroots organization, Tucan Rescue Ranch, has been applying One Health into our, our program and how we work with everything that we have around us. And if, well, if you want to Find me online. Uh, there's my Instagram. There's my email. Uh, there's the info about Tucan Rescue Ranch. You can always follow us online and fo follow us. All the amazing stories we have. We have always been working uh, with the animals and we continue to work with the animals. And uh, well, we love what we're doing. Fantastic. What a great program. I love things like the forest regeneration. It's just the most special thing to see and, and you know, the impact that can have. One of the things that we've had throughout the festival is people, you know, re-releasing animals. And if you release them into an area where they're just going to be captured again, or if they're going to be run into danger again, you're, you're sort of, you're, you're slightly putting out the fire, but you're still leaving the building burning. So uh, I think that that's a really special approach. And it's so nice to see that you really take a holistic uh, approach to everything that you're doing there at the Rescue Ranch and beyond. So kudos to you in this really amazing work. Um, Anna Maria, you, you mentioned at the top, so your presentation was so fast. You have the fastest presentation, I think, of anyone in the whole festival. Well done, gold star to you. Um, where are you right now? You're in, it looks like a, a rehab center. What's going on behind you? Yeah, I'm actually at the clinic. Sorry about that. I was, I was going a little bit too fast. Um, I have the animals on my back. Um, I start over here. We have a small uh, critter. This is a great, great, great green macaw. It's a baby that we just received today. We fed her and she's just sleeping over there. And on the other side, I have um, some sloths. I can actually bring them closer to you guys so you can see. Okay. We won't pass up an opportunity to see some sloths. Never. 
Or my oh, mom. Is... Hello, darling. I will start with this little guy over here. Hi. He's very, very small. Uh, he was found on the nest by itself. And that's when they brought it to us. It's the first case we have received that is not for the green green macaw. So it's very interesting to understand what's going on with this little fellow. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a uh, owl over here. This owl is actually a victim of electrocution, as I was saying. It yeah. comes from the Sarapiki area, and we are rehabilitating him back in, into the wild. Um, his wing is actually doing better, so we're, we're going to hope that we can release him back into the wild. This is a very special case over here. Okay. Uh, this is a mama slot and a baby slot. We just received them a few days ago. Wow. Uh, sadly, they were both electrocuted. Mama is not doing that great. Uh, we have her with an IV and the baby slot is doing great. He's gaining weight. He's actually sucking right now milk. So this is a very special opportunity. Yeah. But yeah, sadly, she's one of the most critical patients we have right now. Uh, she was just fed by the interns and we hope well, we hope that she gets better, uh, but we have to do a little bit more testings with her. We have um, this other slot that just arrived in today. As I was saying, some of the conflicts these animals receive more often is uh, getting hit by cars. She was hit by a car in the drive in well, in a highway. Yeah. And we think she has fractured arms. So we're going to do some x-rays tomorrow and make some decisions about her. Wow. And then we have another slot over here, more electrocuted slot. Um, the hair electrocution is not as severe, but we're trying to save her hand currently. And we're going through some very special treatments uh, like collagen and tilapia skin. And she now is eating, so that's a very good thing. <laughs> then we go into the babies. Um, I'm not gonna open the kennel of this one because she gets a little bit stressed out, but that's, we have this. That's, that's okay, we can stay away from her, but we've seen so much already. So if you wanna, that is just so fantastic. What a, I, I have to ask, so many of the creatures there were electrocuted. Is there a way to mitigate this problem or, or where are they getting electrocuted? Are they climbing from trees onto electric wires or where is this happening? Um, this is a very common problem in Costa Rica. Uh, you have patches of, of wild forest that connects with patches of, of towns and the towns are in the middle of nowhere. And Costa Rica is, it is full of forest so, and, and if, um, it's full of everything. So you, to connect uh, the electricity for the people to continue living, they have to put the wires. And these wires go through the canopy. So whenever the, the trees, uh, the slots are going around in the trees, they found the wires and they, they think it's like a highway to go faster from one patch of the forest into another patch of the forest. So they start to go on, on, these, on these wires and usually when they can make the connection to another wire, that's when they get electrocuted. Right. It's one of the most common problems we have had and we are working right now in the, in the Heredia zone uh, with ISE and with SPH to locate where all the, the most electrocutions are happening to try to cover the power lines. Uh, mm -hmm. We're working with the government to find a way to cover the power lines and avoid uh, slots especially and monkeys getting electrocuted. Yeah, that's a, a, again, a science-based approach, which is really, really cool. And I, I hope that you get the, the facts on that really soon and have the capacity to do that because I mean, we've had in some of our other broadcasts, you know, these simple, simple solutions can prevent animals from going where you don't want them to. Beehives in Africa prevent elephants from coming into people's farmsteads. And I think that's such a special approach and can be really, really low cost and high impact. So I, I wish you well with that, but certainly in our past broadcast with you, electrocution really is, does seem to be a really huge problem. So I'm so curious, you have so much specialized knowledge in how to save species like this. But being electrocuted for a sloth seems like a pretty big deal. How do you go about saving them? Or you talked about saving a hand. I mean, what, what is actually involved in this? How long does it take to rescue these creatures? Well, it, it depends on the sloths. Sloths are very interesting creatures. They can be, uh, they can be really amazing. They can, they can have horrible injuries yeah. where they ha they're full of maggots and they're still walking around and acting like nothing is happening or they can take forever to heal. Um, so we actually have a slot that's been here for almost six months because he has an injury that just doesn't want to close down. So what we do is, well, we do a triage. We find out what is going with the slot. And sometimes the, the bad thing about the electrocutions is that they, they burn from the inside to the outside. So whenever we're doing the treatments, uh, there's, there's necrosis going on on, on, the, on the tissue on a cellular level. So the, the tissue starts dying and sometimes we have to amputate. And we have so many cases of electrocuted slots that have to be amputated, okay. uh, but we have a very good rehabilitation program and release program. And we have actually released many slots that have been amputated back into the wild. 
Yeah. I, it, it's so funny for me because I've had the pleasure of, of doing so many broadcasts with you guys. So I've seen some of this in action, seeing these creatures, you know, getting back to health and it's such a special thing. But what I want to do is, is make sure that anyone who wants to tune in to find out more, toucanrescueranch.org, you guys really do some of the top-notch social media and website stuff to showcase the work that you're doing in the entire planet. So I really encourage everyone when you're doing this broadcast, check out that website and you can see some of this all happening, which is very, very cool. So with a One Health approach, you, you started your talk talking about uh, animal and human diseases transmitting to one another. Is there a way to combat this? Are you seeing this in a place like Costa Rica, where as you said, there's there's so much forest, there's so much everything, there's so much connection between wildlife and people. Um, are you noticing more zoonotic transfers? Are you noticing, I don't know, what's going on? <laughs> well, we have been noticing more diseases coming up. Um, I mean, dengue was not a problem and now it's a big concern in Costa Rica. So they, it's happening all over the world and it's really, really important. The one thing I can say is that bushmeat is not really big in Costa Rica. Animals are morely, more kept like pets instead of like uh, as an income yeah. uh, or food. So that's the main problem. The, also, the, one of the biggest problems in Costa Rica is the transmission of diseases between pets and wildlife. So that's what, what really, really worries the people around having too many birds in one area and then having wild birds coming in and out. So that's the, that's something that is, is uh, needs to be more researched. Yeah. I, uh, for me personally, my first introduction to, to zoonoses in, in the world was a book called Spillover by David Quammen, which is just the most amazing book. So if you're really keen to find out more about this topic, I really encourage people to check that out. It's a fantastic sort of scary resource and very presaging of, of things going on with, with COVID and more right now. So a really, really cool read to sort of uh, tie in this presentation. Uh, Anna Maria, before we wrap up, one thing that I want to uh, stress now that we have so much time, which is great, um, is no, and it was great by the way, it really is nice to have an opportunity to have more of a conversation. We haven't had that chance because the presentations are so short. This has been really special, so thank you for this. Um, <laughs> With Costa Rica, you guys as a country are a real success story globally of conservation, of you know setting aside lands for protected areas. I mean, it, it, in some ways, it's sort of a, a privilege to be in a position where you can rehabilitate and re-release so many wild like, animals back to the, to the wild because you have that wild to do so. There's a lot of ecotourism in Costa Rica. Um, can you speak a little bit to what's happened in the country in the last 30, 40 years to really make that possible? Well, to be completely uh, honest, I come from Mexico. I actually okay. uh, started working in Costa Rica recently. But it's because Costa Rica is so good at what, it, what it's been doing. It's, it has been so green and they have put so many laws in place to, to, to and well, and they have working amazingly with eco ecotourism. So it's, I think it's mainly the focus that they had on ecotourism that they found out that they needed to take care of their own resources that makes it so appealing to people like me that we decide to migrate here and be like, I want to work there. That was a beautiful segue for my terrible setup. That was awesome. Thank you for that very much. Um, Anna Maria, this has been so much fun. Is there a place? So we've got the Re Rescue Ranch website. Uh, you highlighted some social media posts at the end. If people wanted to contribute to your work, if people wanted to learn more about sloths and rehabilitation in this One Health approach generally, is there a place that we could send them? Is there a place that you'd really recommend personally given your expertise? Well, if you well, if you want to apply for a, a professional internship, we have several, and, and we we always work with re rehabilitation. We have the the clinical um, internships. That it's one over here. The other one is at the release side. So it will be very cool if they want to hop on and be part of the internships. Oh, and we also have the virtual internships if you guys want to like hop on and learn a little bit more of our release program. Yeah. So that those places will be a good way to start. Fantastic. Hey, you mentioned at the top that you had interns helping you out. I don't think there's any better internship in the world than feeding baby sloths or helping care for things. It's a pretty special opportunity. So Anna Maria, thank you so much for your time today. It's such a neat organization you guys have going and it's so nice to hear about a little bit of a different side of it than we got the chance to feature yesterday. So thank you so, so much for this. Thank you for having us. Awesome. Well, have a wonderful day. Keep up the amazing work and we will see you again soon, I assure you. Bye for now. Bye.